Hey everyone, Rob here um, in the bee yard. Uh, what I want to do today is kind of talk about what uh, spring varroa mite treatment I chose, why I chose it, how I came up with that, and then we're going to do a bit of an alcohol wash to see if what I chose actually worked. So come along for the ride. Um, hope this helps you whoever's watching this I am no expert but in any means but you know as a second year beekeeper I kind of just wanted to document my journey and have you guys come along the ride thanks so much let's go check it out so treatment number one I was going to use thymobar now there's a reason why I didn't choose thymobar but let me tell you how you use it if this is the treatment that you want to use so this is derived from thymol uh, naturally occurring um, oil that uh, comes from uh, the thyme plant that we all use. So this would be ideal for a fall or spring treatment. Uh, if you're using it in the spring, the instructions say to use it about four weeks before the honey flow starts um, and then take it off. Uh, this way you're not applying it when you have honey supers on. Even though this is an organically managed uh, treatment that you could use for honeybees, uh, it stinks and because of that odor that it puts off that kills these varroa mites It probably will affect the taste of your honey. That's why you shouldn't use it when honey supers are on uh, Another thing is the working temperature that you want to be applying this at is about 12 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius um, That's great and all but here in Ontario where I am uh, you know, Mother Nature just likes to trick us, so we go straight from winter into summer some years. So, to time to get that window, uh, and on top of being able to um, not be able to use it with honey supers on, I did not choose this method, although it's probably great. Um, it's not the one I came up with. Um, now, if you're going to use this in the spring, they say to use an oxalic acid uh, treatment in the uh, fall when everything's broodless. Now that's if you want to go with a completely, you know, if you're planning on organically managing your bees as I am, this is a great option for you. So option number one, time of our strip. Another organic way to manage varroa mites is by using oxalic vapor. So this is an oxalic acid vaporizer gun. Uh, this is a Easy Vape Pro that I had gotten and used. I used this uh, in my first fall of uh, keeping bees. Now, this wouldn't be an ideal spring management solution for your bees because you want everything to be broodless. Um, so in the spring, if you've ever seen that Randy Oliver uh, chart of the, the, you know, the growth, um, the incline and decline of a colony, in the spring you have that huge peak bees are being born a lot of cat brood you wouldn't want to use this although this is a great solution for the fall um, I do use this in the fall I you know apply three treatments five days to seven days apart um, when they're broodless so I'm talking like anything above 10 degrees Celsius uh, this baby does the job here's an easy one you might be thinking well what is this all pictured perfect so this drone trapping so super easy super simple this is one solution i chose this year to go with and all you do is you simply take an old frame you had pop the plastic foundation out and then i like to paint the top bar white or any color just so i know which one it is you could write the date on top because you only want to put this in your hive every 30 days. Now the idea behind this organic uh, method of treating varroa mites is that varroa are attracted to drone sized cells. Now with that, you know, you put this in, the bees are gonna draw this out and primarily only use this for drone brood. And the mites go in, they get capped over, so they're trapped. And then you go in there in 30 days, take this out, put it in the freezer, feed it to your chickens, do whatever you gotta do. And uh, you've just uh, solved that problem of uh, Varroa. Or you didn't solve it, no one ever solves it. But um, you know, you got ahead of them because you tricked them into going into this frame that's gonna end up getting tossed or destroyed. So 
Um, very cool solution. Uh, this is one that I did use. I'm interested to see how it worked. Now there are drone size cell frames out there that you can use. Uh, that's all great, but um, you know, the reason why, the whole reason behind using plastic foundation is it, it uh, doesn't allow the bees to uh, make drone size cells because they could go right through, make the cell whatever, or whatever size they, they want. Um, but when you give them this, when everything else in the hive has plastic foundation on it, they go gung-ho, go to town, and uh, supposedly only make this uh, drone size brood, cap it over, take it out, put it in the freezer, kill everything, kill all the larvae, kill everything. Then when you put it back in the frame, you know the varroa mite are dead, but also the drone brood's dead, but the bees will clean it out and reuse it. So essentially you've saved them some time in making um, that honey, that, that brood foundation. So this is one of the things I used. So what is this sticky mess in this silver packaging you may ask? It is hop guard. Now, I decided to use hop guard. Why did I decide to use hop guard? So this treatment here is safe to use when honey supers are on. Great, fantastic. Easy to apply. Essentially what you do is you take two strips, they're cardboard strips, saturated in this sticky molasses-like substance that's derived from hops, something uh, most of us uh, consume on a daily basis, beer. Um, and what this does is it sits in the brood nest, uh, operating temperatures on this one, I believe are 13 degrees Celsius to 33 degrees Celsius, which is great. Uh, I think that's a big enough window here in Southern Ontario where uh, you can apply it just as your colony starting to take off uh, in the early season, which I did. Um, you put it in for 30 days, paired with the drone trapping. Um, this is a great solution. I want to see how it turned out. We're going to go take a, uh, a trip or take a walk to the hive that has this. We shook a five uh, 30 days ago. Uh, let's see if that's dropped because we're going to do an alcohol wash to see if it works. All right. So... This is the hive in question here. So we're gonna rip this hive apart. Uh, this is a single brood box here. Everything else here is honey. This is the latest uh, honey super. Not sure how much honey they're collecting, but we had a pretty big rainfall. So I'd imagine uh, there's a pretty good nectar flow happening. But uh, I'm gonna throw this veil on um, and uh, have a look at these honeybees. They look like they're having a great time bringing in some nectar. So let me uh, smoke them up. Give it a second, suit up. When I'm working with honey supers, I don't want to apply too much smoke. I don't want to affect the flavor of the honey. That may be capped. Woo-wee! They're working. Smells fantastic. Okay, let's get these bees down.
ration container. So here is Woo wee. Yep. Look at that. That's all drone frame, a uh, drone brood. Look at that. get you a close-up here if you can see that cap drone brood cap drone brood have the white bar painted on top doing it very well so what I'm gonna do is this is destined for the freezer just to make sure that uh, everyone inside there is uh, already dead there's larva in there now thing is if you don't take this out well you've just become a varroa mite farmer so it's important to come back in that 30 days and get this gone. So, destined for the freezer. While I get that frozen, I'm gonna take the two treatments out that we have there. Where is uh... Where's my... Now what I'd like to do is look for a frame that has open larva, open eggs to take my sample from. Those would be the ideal nurse bees. That's all brood right there. I'm not looking for the queen. Don't need to look for the queen. I have eggs, so that's fine. Boy, oh boy, that's a lot. me these guys. So just make sure your queen's not on here. Nope, don't see her. Don't see her. So I'm just gonna take my cup and just go down. And let them just fall right in. Fall right in. 
got enough for our sample. I think I've pissed them off enough, so we're going to close up this hive. back on like so now Shake and shake and shake. So one, two, three, four. Four. So dropped. I guess I don't know. I'm not super duper overly impressed, but I don't know. That's the number. Four. We had a five drop by one. I don't know if that's tremendously uh amazing but tell me what you think leave comments down below tell me what you think originally we shook a five now we're shaking a four i don't know let me know anyways i hope you enjoyed this video i hope that might have uh, inspired you to use one of these methods multiple of these methods uh in using uh you know in keeping organically managed bees hope that helps and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Let me know if you like this. Thanks so much.